up everyone this is Ben Zinn from nextlevelguitar.com and uh, today we're bringing you another one of our inspired by video lessons. We're going to take a look at some cool rockabilly stuff today. We're going to take a look at some bass line riffs that we can do, some rhythm playing, and a couple of lead licks. So chock full of good stuff. We'll get started with the bass line. Hey you guys before we continue on take a look down here in the YouTube text box there's a link for a free video lesson and a coinciding ebook that we're going to include for you it's not available on YouTube it's exclusively through nextlevelguitar.com so take a look at that and we'll continue on okay so we got three components to our lesson today we got our bass line little boogie riff we got our chord part and we got our lead licks so starting with our bass line we're going to be outlining a certain chord progression, just a 1-4-5 sort of thing with a little 2 chord, but don't even worry about that. We're in the key of G, so let's take a look at the riff that we're going to be playing to outline each chord. Over our 1 chord, or our G chord, that riff is going to be played two times and that's going to cover four measures of our one chord. Also, go ahead and palm mute that. Dampen the strings with your right hand as you pick it. We'll alternate, alternate pick that. Down, up, down, up, down, up. Nice and steady. And put a little swagger to it. Put a little swing to it as well. that slow it kind of sounds like a blues or old like cow pope country sort of thing but when we speed it up when we work it back up to speed that's when it gives it that sort of rockabilly flavor <laughs> right. so we have that riff twice or for four measures and then to go to our four chord we're simply going to move the exact same pattern down a string starting here at C going to play that riff one time that covers two measures and then we're back to our first riff our one chord one more time one time through our two measures so up to that up to this point we have off here's what we're going to do next a lot of chromatic stuff or just connecting half steps happening in the next riff we're starting on a we're going to walk this sucker all the way up that covers two measures and if you're curious it's an a minor chord to a d7 that we're playing over there but here's the riff and now we're back to our one chord, G7, and we're going to walk our bass line down. And by the time we play that note, we've created our loop. We're back to the beginning of the progression. So let's just uh, work through those last four measures that we just went over to see those in context, and then we'll look at the whole thing in context one more time. So last four measures. And you're back to the beginning. Whole thing one more time. Once we have that going, we can play chords on top of it. So we're going to play some chord voicings now that are going to outline that same progression that we just played over. Let's take you through those next. First we're going to be playing a G7. All of my chords, by the way, are going to be on the top four strings. So 
you can go ahead and rip strings five and six off of your guitar. If you want. Don't do that. Don't do that. So here's here's our first chord, G7. Second chord, C9. It's kind of a cool voicing for a C9. Back to our G7. A minor 7. Just one finger across all four strings there. To D9. Just one note different there. See how much of a, a difference changing one note in a chord. We're at a whole new chord here. Here was A minor 7. D9. And we close out on a G chord. Okay, the rhythm. Let's start by how long we're on each chord. Play our G7 for four measures. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, C9, two, three, four, and then two, three, back to G, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, A minor seven, D9, That's 12 measures. Works out the same way we counted our bass line up top. Okay, and I used the same sort of rhythm pattern throughout the whole progression. Uh, I'll demonstrate on our first chord, our G7. And once you got the rhythm to this, you just carry it on through to the rest of the progression. We're going to hit on the and of one and on count three. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Yeah. You can mix up maybe holding out that last chord, letting it ring, or cutting it short, provide some variety. But the rhythm of it, when we hit it, that doesn't change. That'll stay the same. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two. Just take that all the way through your progression now. And start over. All right, now let's take a look at some of those lead licks, shall we? So, so. our first one. basically going to play that the whole time I'm playing over the one chord. So here it is against the progression. Now when I get to the four chord, this is where, I, where I'm going to unleash the fury a little bit here. I'm going to play repeated six note idea. And again, just repeat this all the way through the four chord, or for those two measures. It gets pretty fun when you work it up to speed. Make sure to keep your picking nice and consistent, all alternating, and work that up to speed. And so on. So. Here it is again in context. When you hear the chord change, I'll go to the second idea. So with both ideas together now. So there we go. We change our repeated riff or our repeated lick as the chord changes. And we're back to the one chord at this point. So why don't we just wail away again, keeping with the theme. We'll repeat an idea here. 
we'll grab that ugly sounding chord and just kind of milk it for all it's worth here. to play over the turnaround portion of the progression and we got a nice little 12 bars that we can use there so you can see I was just kind of milking that that chord there when we go to the resolution here the going to walk up to the A note do a reverse rake here. This is kind of fancy, but again, it's pretty fun. It may take a little bit of time if it's new to you. Reverse rake. So it's like sweet picking, but backwards. Essentially, you're just barring across here at 17, dragging your pick with upstrokes, and rolling your ring finger to follow. Unlike with sweet picking, it's, it's okay if you don't hear those notes all the way. That's kind of the charm of it is the, the percussive sound of it. Here is our whole 12 bars all put together now. pieces we got our bass line we got our chords and we have our lead so check that stuff out have fun with it make it your own try changing it up see what else you can come up with with some of those ideas thanks again so much for joining us today uh, make sure you visit our website uh, nextlevelguitar.com we have over a thousand video lessons there for beginners intermediates and on, on through advanced so a lot of great additional stuff there if you head on over to our website Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.